good morning today we will continue the lesson sports and nutrition eating disorder we have discussed yesterday then uh, anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa so the next topic that we will discuss today is effect of diet on performance the effects of diet on performance what type of diet we should s- select as a, p- a sports person and what is its effect in performance so the effect of diet we can see is the essential nutrients we have discussed fat the major source of fuel because this is the energy providing food so the effect on performance is where is sports required different proportion of fat to muscles extra fat diminished the performance so fat is required because it is the source of energy which gives the energy when the carbohydrate stores are empty but excess fat it reduces the performance it declines the performance as carbohydrate that is the major source for muscular contraction this is also source for of energy and work as a fuel so effect is that it, it increase the endurance low level of carbohydrate reserved in exhaustion so carbohydrate level should be optimum a good carbohydrate level should be there during the performance so mainly the carbohydrate is the main product main component which uh, is very helpful for the sport person in their performance because energy is highly required during the performance so energy level should be optimum and maximum then protein protein is necessary for growth and tissues in case of sports person we can see during the sports the protein helps for repairing the tissues and it is the body building food so protein is used as a fuel for muscular work but does not have significant effect on the performance because the, it also provides certain amount of energy that we have we know when the carbohydrate stores are vacant so protein also provides certain amount of energy but the role of protein starts immediately after the workout is over during workout little uh, the rebuilding of the small tissues takes place real work of the protein starts after the performance it helps to maintain the rear and tears of tissues the damage of tissues so this is now that's why it is known as the body building food minerals minerals are essential for good health that we have discussed different minerals and their importance in case of the performance we can say the deficiency decreases the performance because during the performance sweating is there and a lot of hormones and enzymes are formed in the body so sweating reduces the amount of sodium 
and other minerals in the body excess amount of salt intake can lead potassium loss and extra water retention so minerals level should be also optimum and the recommended doses we should have fully loaded with the minerals before the performance because during the performance these minerals will play a big role but it should not be excess water water is another essential components of the diet it is essential for life has no caloric calorific values deficiency increased performance cause risk of central nervous disorder the deficiency of water during the performance can cause dehydration and cramps also so body must remain hydrated during the performance so the water has also big role during the performance also because during the performance the loss of water is there due to sweating excessive sweating is there during the performance during physical activities so that's why the role of the water in the performance that is the very important keeps body hydrated vitamins these are essential for good health we have discussed body cannot store large amount of vitamins and excess vitamins passed out through urine puts extra load on excretory organs so as vitamins play a protective role these are the protective food so the doses for the sports person or during the, for the performance are recommended like vitamin c for non athlete intake is 60 mg mg and for athlete intake is 300 to 500 mg according to the activity and b complex is very important during the performance so must be loaded fully with b complex because b complex deficiency decreases the performance so this was all about the effect of diet on performance eating for weight control eating for weight control we can see that a healthy weight how we can maintain healthy weight pitfalls of dieting food intolerance and food myth we will discuss it height and weight chart what should be the weight according to the height because height is directly not in your hand we cannot adjust height height depends on the growth and development since birth since childhood the growth of the body growth of the body organ decide the height of the individual but weight is we can control the weight weight is in our hand directly so we can control 
the weight according to the height. So, the height and weight chart is here we can see according to a height the weight of the body. We must main maintain ideal weight for keeping ourselves fit and healthy. We will come to the BMI body mass index. <coughs> the body mass index, index, this is BMI, is a test to check the weight of individual is proper or not according to the height. As we know, we cannot fluctuate the height, we cannot adjust the height according to the weight, only weight is there which we can adjust. So, we are checking the weight of individual is proper or not according to the height. So, that is the test is there that, that is known as body mass index BMI. The method of calculating the BMI, the formula is there. So, the formula for BMI is weight is divided by height square. Weight should be in kg and height should be in meter. The measurement of height should be in meter and weight should be in kg. We can convert if the height is in centimeter we can convert it. Weight most commonly we measure in kg. Another formula when the weight is measured in LBS, so then the another formula is there 703 into weight in LBS and height in inches square. So, most common formula what we use that is the weight in kg and height in meter the weight is divided by height square. So, categories are there, different categories are there. If the BMI of individual comes less than 18.5 considered underweight. If the weight of the person, the BMI of the person comes 8.5 to 20.5 is considered normal weight or healthy weight the weight of the, the BMI of the person comes 25 to 29.9 it is considered overweight after 29.9 from 30 onwards obesity starts so the type of obesities are there obesity type 1 class 1 it is if the BMI is 30 to 34.9 Obesity type 2, class 2, it is when the BMI is 35 to 39.9 and obesity type 3, class 3, that is if the BMI is more than 40. So, the index we must remember. So, according to this index, we can find out the category which we are following and how to calculate the BMI this is very easy. So, we will go through the calculation BMI calculation one example I am giving you here. If the body weight is 65 kg height of the individual is 1 170 centimeter as could normally we measure, measure height in centimeter or weight in kg. So, body weight and height is there, then we have converted height in meter, so 1.7 geometer, 
then the BMI formula of the BMI is there. Weight is divided by height into height, height is square. So we can see the 65 kg is divided by 1.70 meter into 1.70 meter. So 65 is divided by the height square, height square is 2.89. That calculation is there. So BMI of the individual is 22.4. the calculation is over 22.4 is the BMI so which falls in the category healthy normal weight so this is the healthy category here we have some more options when how much weight a person should gain in case of underweight and how much persons a person should lose in case of overweight or obesity, obese, that the formula are different. That is the formulas are also based on the BMI and so we can calculate the amount of weight which either we need to reduce to come in normal or healthy category or we need to gain in case of underweight persons we need to gain so those formulas also we will discuss here 